So in today's video, I'm going to talk about diversity in fashion and basically why diversity is very important in fashion. So I'm going to talk about diversity in fashion in terms of different type parts of fashion, like different sides of the industry, and then everything is going to tie back in together. So first, let's talk about journalism because obviously I want to be a fashion journalist and um, it's really important I talk about this first. So in journalism, the issue I've had with journalism for a really long time is 99.9% .9 of fashion journalists are white European. Now there's nothing obviously wrong with being white European. The issue with that is all the perspectives of fashion are exactly the same. Like I read like a hundred different reviews on one show and like 95% of them are the same. And it's because you have People who are upper class or middle class, they're white, don't really understand much about reality because they haven't really lived any sort of adverse life. And then also what that type of journalism comes with is prejudice and classism. And that's why any time a fashion journalist, for the most part, covers a designer that's from a working class background, they always bash it before they understand it. Um, the, that thing happened to McQueen where a lot of journalists because once again the upper class middle class europeans they just couldn't get their head around understanding that a working class man alexander mcqueen could be a good designer so when they first saw his designs they were just saying oh but he's just a working class guy what could he possibly know about luxury fashion this is imagine this is someone who worked at Savile Row and became a pattern making expert and then this issue is seeping into different forms of fashion so a good example was and i love id magazine i'm a huge fan of id magazine but i read this id article and it was by a european journalist and it was they were talking about african fashion and fashion in nigeria and everything that was in the article was just so factually wrong and so incorrect and every all the things that they were trying to explain the references to didn't even make sense and anyone who's nigerian would know that and it's just like when there's no diversity in fashion you limit people's understanding of different cultures because if there was a chinese journalist who had lived in china who could explain certain references of different chinese designers me as someone who's not chinese would learn way more than some like European who doesn't even understand anything about Chinese culture and hasn't gone there to try and immerse himself in the culture to understand it. Try to talk about the fashion history in China, like how does that even make sense? So by the lack of diversity in fashion, in fashion journalism, um, a lot of reviews are very limiting. A lot of writing is very limited because there isn't enough difference in perspective. So someone like me, um, I, did not grow up in a posh neighborhood or I wasn't brought up rich. And then I moved to Nigeria and I spent two years in my village in Nigeria. And then I moved to the city in Nigeria before coming back to London. So I understand people that are from lower income backgrounds, uh, which first of all, most people that work in fashion don't because most people in fashion are upper class or middle class. So when I write about fashion, I don't have any prejudice. The, I never, I've never thought in my life about re when I'm reviewing someone's show or reviewing how, or thinking about how someone designs or whether I like a collection, it doesn't even factor into my mind about are they lower class? Oh, are they street? Do these, because what happens is if the designer is lower class, they're just gonna see the designs as more street just because of where they're from. And all that does is just limit good journalism. That's all that does. Now, if we shift that same mentality of diversity into modeling, um, it is complete common sense that people of different ethnicities have different body shapes, um, different skin tones. Now, everyone knows if you study color science to any degree that certain colors work better with different colors. So dark colors like my skin tone would look good beside a bright yellow. Um, dark skin colors go well with um, bright colors. And then someone who has more pale skin or like more white skin, so like a European um, model would really look elegant wearing like a dark black dress. However, if you put an extremely dark skinned person in, a, in an extremely dark black dress, it's too camouflage and it doesn't look, it doesn't pop, it doesn't look fantastic. Because the whole argument in the fashion industry is the reason why models are skinny is because 
models are human hangers and they're, when models walk with the clothing on the runway, it's supposed to look flattering, right? So if that is their argument, why is it that a lot of European designers are so adverse to using designers from different ethnicities, like from China or Africa or um, Mexico or like Latino countries? Because if you really cared about making your clothes look flattering, you would get someone with a skin tone that works the best with the colors of your collection. And then to take it one step further, I've seen designers who, another argument for why they don't have a diversity of models is because the inspiration of their collection um, is very European based or Eurocentric. And to that I say, so why is it that when brands kind of reference places like China, they don't use Chinese models or when they use African print in their collections, they don't use African models. So once again, the problem I have with industry is just a bunch of upper class and middle class circle jerkers who are not really passionate. They don't have the passion for fashion. They just have connections and to them it's just all one big game. So literally by using models with different tones on different colors, we can make clothing on the runway look more flattering. Of course, different body shapes also will fit um, different clothing better, just depending on the body shape and depending of, on the silhouette of the clothing, of course. And of course, collections will look more authentic if you use models from where your inspiration is from. So Dior, because Dior does this a lot. Um, Dior, if you're going to reference Mexico for one of your collections, it makes sense to use Mexican models because it makes it more authentic. Um, same thing, Dior. If you are going to use African prints in your collections, it makes a lot more sense to use uh, black models because if your whole collection is based on Africa and your whole argument before when you were making Eurocentric um, collections and you used only European models, which fair enough, it makes sense if you are consistent with that argument, but unfortunately they're not. So just make sure you use African models. If the inspiration of the collection is African, of course. Then pivoting into fashion design, and this is probably going to be what I'm going to talk about the most. Uh, all the innovation, when we think of fashion design, has always come from diversity of thought. Now, diversity of thought is not necessarily specific to any ethnicity, but there is a correlation between ethnicity and diversity of thought because how a black person thinks could be very different from a white person just based on where they grew up. One might grow up in Africa, one might grow up in the West. Also, the influences around them, because even if both of a white person and a black person grow, grows up in the West, uh, their values, their family values will be different. Their culture is still different. So when I say diversity of thought, I'm not really talking about ethnicity, but funny enough, ethnicity does correlate with diversity of thought. Now, going back to my point, um, I'm just thinking of any great designer off the top of my head. If I think of Christian Dior, Christian Dior created silhouettes, changed the way women dressed. Um, that was because he had diversity of thought. He thought differently to the way designers were designing at the time, which made him innovative in the way he designed clothing. The same can be said for Chris Balenciaga, the same can be said for Vivian Westwood, the same can be said for Yoji Yamamoto, same can be said for Reika Kubo, same can be said for Alexander McQueen, so many designers. If we think of people like uh, the Antwerp Six, the Antwerp Six all graduated from the Royal Academy of Fine Arts in Antwerp, and the Royal Academy of Fine Arts in Antwerp was, um, they were, it was an art school, and they didn't have a fashion course until 1963, if I can remember correctly. So when this fashion course was started, it was started by people with an art background who wanted to create a fashion course in the institution. So they were teaching fashion from the perspective of, of an artist. And this artistic and referential approach to fashion is what created this very unique way um, that the people that graduated from that school saw fashion and designed fashion. And that is why you have very, very creative people that come from that school, like the Antwerp Six or Chris Van Asch, who was the creative director of Dior Ohm and now he's at Baluti, or people like Haider Ackerman, or people like um, Demna Vesalia. These are insanely creative and amazing designers. And what basically created them and what makes them so good is because they think so different and of their artistic approach to fashion that makes it unique and makes it really innovative. But I think more and more um, as a fashion journalist and well, I want to be a fashion journalist, 
I look to different regions to see different types of fashion. And I've started to realize um, as the day goes that there's so much innovation happening in countries where there isn't a blueprint as much as like, let's say in the West, um, that are creating amazing things that I've never seen before. In the West, I've seen so many, there's so many good brands, but they all look the same. And there's no more real innovation. Even when people work at big houses, all they do is reference past collections. And this whole idea of really sitting down and creating your aesthetic and being innovative in fashion, um, there isn't much of a focus on that in the West as much as there is in different parts of the country because in places like China, with brands like um, Shishi Tong, brands like Uma Wang, brands like Ziggy Chen, they are making things I've never seen before. There's so much innovation. Or I go to places like Africa and there's uh, the LVMH, former LVMH prize winner, Thebe Magugu from South Africa, or people like Kenneth Ize, or people like Moa Lola. The type of stuff they make, I've never seen it before, and how they reference their things, because they are referencing African fashion. And Western designers don't know how to reference African fashion properly, so when brands like Dior have tried to make African-inspired collections, it's just the print, because they don't really know anything about African um, history. So. They can't really reference it properly. And personally, as a fashion journalist and someone who's interested in fashion, if you want to see fashion move forward, you kind of have to look all over the world because talent exists everywhere. There's talent in Mexico, there's talent in Japan, there's talent in China, there's talent in London, there's talent in Paris. But the way the fashion industry operates right now is that people behave as if there's only talent in the West. And the journalists, the way they write, once a designer is not from the West or once they didn't go through the whole CSM Parsons route, they are very, very dismissive. And I think it's because either it's a classism thing or a lot of journalists are very close-minded. And ultimately, fashion is an industry that thrives on creativity. And if we think of creativity, um, if I'm in a room, I would rather be full of a room of people with conflicting opinions on things because then it would become a melting pot of different ideas. And I'd learn way more than if I was in a room of full of people that thought exactly the same as me. What the hell would I learn? Nothing. Um, how the hell would we create anything new or fresh or innovative if I was just in a room full of people that were all the same as me? So in fashion, we can only continue to innovate if people have diversity of thought, which is really lacking in fashion right now because fashion is so Eurocentric. In Japan, there are so many fantastic brands that are doing amazing, innovative things. There is a brand called, called Anne Rillage um, that I've been doing research on recently. And Anne Rillage, um, that brand tackles technology and they use a lot of technology in their designs. And also the silhouettes are very, very new and refreshing. Or there's designers that come under the umbrella of Comme des Garçons, like Kay Ninomiya. Kay Ninomiya is an amazing designer who's doing innovative things. And the funny thing about things I hear people say in fashion is, people always say everything in fashion has already been done, so now people just have to reference. That is just such BS. Because I'm sure when before Vivian Westwood came along, everyone said, yeah, everything in fashion has been done. And then Vivian Westwood did what she did. Then people said, everything in fashion has been done. And then here comes Ray Kawakubo and Yoji Yamamoto. Everything in fashion has been done. Here comes Helmut Lang and Jill Sander. So everything in fashion has been done. And then here comes Hussein to Lion. So that whole thing is just such BS. Um, I think in fashion, because it's so Eurocentric and everyone just tries to be the next Chris Barber and Tiaga instead of looking at themselves and trying to find um, references from their own culture and really doing a deep dive and taking their time uh, when they design. And I think that's why there's not much innovation in the West anymore. And that is honestly why we need diversity in fashion to push this industry forward because the places I'm seeing innovation in fashion right now is not happening in Europe for the most part, unless we're talking about a select few amount of designers like your Demna Vesalias or your Rick Owens. But outside of select few designers, for the most part, everyone just copies each other and every brand I see is just a watered down version of like Jill Sander when they try to do the minimalism thing or it's a watered down streetwear version of Comme des Garçons or Margiela and they try to do the whole 
deconstruction thing and it's just there's not really much innovation and now when I look at designs because honestly western fashion really bores me apart from the select few designers that I said the innovation is mostly happening in Japan it's happening in Africa it's happening in places like Mexico there are a lot of really good Mexican designers right now or it's happening in places like China or places like Korea um, Korea has some amazing brands like 99% Ears, Blindness, Kang Hyuk, um, Woo Young Mi, Jun Jae. And yeah, to me, I don't know, maybe it's because I'm not upper class. So I don't have this aura of elitism and I don't, I just think elitism is just daft. Like I just, I don't really understand elitism, but maybe because I'm a popper um, in the grand scheme of things. So I just, look for innovation i'm more passionate about the industry and i just love fashion for fashion rather than this whole circle jerk of ego and all this other stuff so to me it just makes common sense why we should have diversity in fashion um because most of the time when the conversation is about diversity in fashion people just think it's like ethnic minorities begging for a space but actually in my opinion allowing ethnic minorities into the fashion space would actually push the industry forward um but honestly it just depends on what the gatekeepers and what people want to see do you want to see fashion move forward or do you want to keep seeing the same Jill Sander ripoffs over and over again and not explore any creative side of fashion but yeah on that note comment down below uh, your thoughts on this matter um, just in diversity and fashion in general. Obviously, I could have gone down the racism route, but that isn't really what this video was about. Uh, this video was literally just talking about how diversity actually pushes the industry forward. So yeah, uh, like this video, subscribe to the channel, turn on your post notifications so you get notified when I post another video and stay tuned for more videos.